Hello tiny friends. Welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. I'm Jolene and today is another episode of Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. Um, and I'm kind of really excited for today because today I got dirt and it is dirt day. Um, I'm kind of excited about laying down this layer of dirt because from there I can begin to build the more of the landscaping and once it's got a good dirt foundation I can begin to add the trees and the grass. Um, I'm also going to add a base structure to the barrier so I'll be applying some of the sticks to fill in this hole here. I would like to apply the sticks to the mud and glue while it's wet to see the, how that holds up when it dries. I'm kind of curious to see how that's gonna dry and hold up. So I'm gonna begin the first layer of the barrier. It's not gonna be a lot. It's just gonna be a few sticks, something that I can attach everything on to. Okay, so my hair is back and I am ready. Um, I'm gonna talk about the preparation that I did to the dirt because I did do a few things to it. Um, I have three different types of dirt. We'll talk about that as well. And yeah, let's get started. Okay, this first kind is just garden soil that came out of a bag of soil you would plant your plants and garden with. Um, I had a bag in my backyard that I normally put in my storage bench and I forgot and left this out. So it was completely soaked from all the rain. What I did with all of the dirt was I baked it. Um, I wanted to make sure that it was all dry. This one took about two hours and I started it on 375 and then it was like really cooking. So I turned it down to about 275, 300. This dirt is sand that I collected from a sand pile um, in my area down the road. And I also got this kind of dirt from the same area. It was just a different pile. I didn't get a lot of this because uh, it was loaded with debris and it was hard to grab. So this is what I got out of it. After I baked the dirt, I sifted it. And this was all the debris that was taken out of that dirt in the red bucket. I just sifted it all with uh, my one of my grandson's kids' uh, strainer for the beach. So it worked out really well. And once it was all dry, it sifted really easy. So now I have all this clean dirt. <laughs> I also sifted the garden dirt and got a bunch of uh, mulch out of there because they like to put mulch in that as well. So now I have all this dirt. It's separated. I want to use different types and textures for the ground. Uh, for the sand, I'm planning on putting that on the top layer for the path that actually goes into the cemetery and also around the spiral of the markers. Because I feel like that's, you know, where people would walk and it would be a lighter dirt there. I don't know. I, I kind of see in my head paths are kind of like a lighter dirt. Kind of like a dusty dirt. But I also pulled these rocks out of some of that dirt. And what I did with these was I put them in a metal bowl and I added boiling hot water to them. And it cleaned them off really good. A lot of the rocks I thought were rocks were not they were just hard chunks of dirt so they pretty much dissolved but it was really hard to tell because they were so hard so I got these and I got these tiny little pebble stones out I do have more somewhere but this is what came out of the dirt I also collected some of these little roots that came out of the hard dirt clumps and I'm definitely going to be adding these to the barrier. And it's also a reminder because I wanted to go out into my backyard and grab some of the roots from the dead plants out there. So I'll be adding these to the barrier as well. Okay, so I've got these sticks and I've been collecting these sticks for years for my projects. I have different sizes. Uh, this one is actually a birch 
branch that I painted. So it's not really from a real birch tree, but I painted it to make it look like one for one of my previous projects. But I think I'm gonna save that for the trees and use that. Um, I wanna use some of these bigger sticks. I'll break them down, of course, so that they fit properly. And I'm just gonna place them around. I do need to leave space in between for the lights to come shining through. But um, I'm just gonna separate them into piles and I'll be using some of these to attach onto the barrier. Hopefully, we'll see how this works out. Because again, you know, I've never done nothing like this before. <laughs> All experimental. So um, I've got some smaller sticks and some of these would be really good um, in the landscaping around the cemetery or uh, for the trees. Since this is garden dirt, it's got a lot of the peat moss in it and you can see those little white pellets. I don't really want that in my ground. So I'm gonna use this for the barrier since the barrier is gonna get covered up for the most part anyways. And it should be pretty clean from all the critters. Uh, if not, I guess <laughs> this will be the best place for them to end up, right? I mean, they're not gonna be very happy with me being glued in for eternity, but what better place than Stephen King's Pet Cemetery? Um, I'm gonna add some of this mulch back in here just for different textures. I wanna use this dirt for the barrier. So I'm just throwing some of this mulch back in, not much, just a couple handfuls and some of the debris from the dirt. Okay, before I commit to permanently uh, gluing everything down, I'm gonna use some Elmer's school glue. You can use Mod Podge for this, um, but I've got some water and I'm also going to use some of this lightweight spackling because uh, I don't have any dry plaster and I'm thinking this would probably be the same thing as long as it doesn't dry white. But it does call for the dry plaster. I'm gonna do a trial just to see how this works out. So I'm gonna do a patch with the lightweight spackle and a patch without. So the smaller patch is without it's just glue and water and dirt and the bigger patch is with just a little bit of the spackle and then i sprinkled a little bit of the dry dirt on top so i'm going to let this dry and come back to it and we'll see what works out okay i let them dry overnight and the bigger patch was just a little bit thicker than the smaller patch so it did take a little longer to dry uh, the bigger patch has the lightweight spackle. The smaller patch is just water and glue. And they are equally as hard. So it looks like I don't need to add the lightweight spackling. I can just go with the water and glue. And that's going to be great because I don't have to add an additional uh, product to this. I love the way that it turned out. It looks very realistic. Uh, there's different textures, different colors. So water and glue, that's the option I'm going to take today. And I'm going to get started. Okay, I'm going to share everything I'm learning as I go because that's what's happening here. <laughs> so key thing, you want to use hot water. Um, don't use cool or cold water because it's going to harden up your glue faster. Hot water will keep your glue softer longer while you're applying this, and it also breaks everything down nicely. So definitely want to use hot, warm to hot. The hotter I say, the better. Um, you don't want boiling hot, but you want it hotter than warm. And because this container is so big, I'm just pushing everything down to one part of the container so it's easier to mix up. So this is the consistency I chose uh, for the barrier, but I definitely could have went a lot thinner and I would say definitely a lot thinner. Um, but at this time, I didn't know that. I thought I was gonna need it to be thicker for the barrier and that is not the case. There are several reasons why you wanna go thinner with this uh, technique. So I'll talk about that as I go along. But for now, it's kind of like a thick brownie batter. I'm gonna start to apply this and um, I've learned quite a lot between the barrier and the flatter landscaping. So uh, right now, I'm just mixing this up really good and now I'm gonna begin to apply it. 
Okay, I'm just gonna try to get this as thin as possible. I don't need a thick layer because the consistency of this is pretty thick. So the thinner you can get this spread out and the thinner your consistency is, the faster it's gonna dry and the more product you're gonna be able to spread around. So you're gonna use less product overall. Now I'm just gonna start applying this with my hands because it's gonna be quicker and it's gonna be easier and I'll be able to feel the difference in the layer. So I'm just gonna apply this and I'm gonna move along and uh, fast forward a little bit. Okay, so this is where I'm at so far, and now I'm going to begin to apply the sticks. Now, I'm going to dip the ends of the sticks in the glue, and then just kind of pack them in with a little more of the dirt. And you're going to see me just jumping right ahead with this, because for most of this part, my arms and hands were in the way of the footage. So I'm just going to skip right along while I'm going through this. But this is going to give me a nice foundation to attach all the little sticks and all the debris that's going to be creating the barrier. Okay, so this is where I'm at with the barrier and I'm going to stop for now. Um, I'm going to continue on with covering the rest of the landscape with the other dirt. But right now I'm at a stopping point with the barrier. I've used all the garden soil, so I'm going to move forward with the rest of the foundation. Okay, for the remaining part of the landscape, I'm going to use this chip brush, this paintbrush, to apply the dirt. And um, I'm going to try to basically ap apply it as thin as I can possibly get it. And this is going to be a thinner consistency. So I'm using the other kind of dirt. And um, I'm not going to use all of it. I'm going to save some of it because I do want to scatter some of the dry dirt on top later on. Uh, so I am using the glue and the hot water. And I'm just going to keep applying the glue and the water a little at a time as I go along. And I'm going to be adding more of the glue than I am the water. Okay, I'm going to add some of the mulch from the garden soil and some of the debris that I actually pulled out of this dirt and probably a little of my hair as well. But <laughs> I'm going to mix this up really good and I'm going to add a little more of that glue. This is going to give it a nice, nice different textures, a little bit of rocks and stuff to the terrain. Those little white peat moss pellets, um, they just kind of look like little white stones. So uh, after using it, I realized that. And now I really don't mind if they're in the soil or not. Okay, here you're going to see the difference between the consistency. And this is more of how you want it to be. So I probably should have did this for the barrier as well. Several reasons why it works out so much better. Um, I'm literally just painting this mud on to the landscaping. So I'm using the chip brush and as I'm kind of stipling it around, that's gonna leave texture and it's helping me just kind of paint it. So this layer is as thin as a layer of paint and it's going a long way. So from the barrier to this point, a big difference, I've learned a lot. I've learned a better way of applying this and what works a little bit better. So thinner consistency and you just want to kind of paint it on. You don't need it to be super thick. You just need the coverage. Uh, the thinner, the better. And it's going to be better for drying. It's going to be better for applying. So just keep that in mind if you want to try this out. Okay, if it starts to dry up on you, it's begins to get a little bit thicker, just dip your paintbrush in some warm water or uh, make a little dish of hot water and glue solution and dip your brush in that or apply that 
to some of the mud and it'll spread it around more and thin it out. So if that starts to happen and you're trying this technique, just remember to do that. Um, it helps to keep this stuff moving along as you're applying it. But you can see I'm just painting it on and I'm just trying to get it right all the way up to the sides. I'm not really worried if there's any white showing along the sides because that's where all the trees and stuff are going to be. I'm going to be adding more layers onto this. This is just the main dirt foundation. There's going to be trees, there's going to be grass, brush, stumps, rocks. So I just need this to be the main foundation. And you can see that there are lighter spots in here and that's where the mud is super thin and, and that's the plaster that you're seeing. I'm not worried about that at all because there's going to be so much layered on top of this. Those areas are not going to be a problem at all. Now I didn't get to the back corners, but um, I am going to fill those in as well. Right now I am going to create a spray bottle of warm water and Mod Podge and I'm going to spray this whole thing completely, especially over the barrier because the barrier is so thick and I feel like the thinner your consistency is, the harder it's going to set when it dries and the better it's going to hold up. So I am kind of worried about the barrier being so thick and I just want to make sure that gets coated with a nice layer for added support and security. So I'm just doing a section at a time and I'm beginning to lay down the dry dirt. I'm not sure if you can tell uh, there's areas that are white and that's the glue solution and it's just Mod Podge and warm water. But I did a pretty good mixture of that. I put it in a spray bottle and just started spraying it down. And this is where I'm at. I've added a lot of the mulch over the barrier so all that is mulch and I've also added a soupy really really soupy consistency of dirt with the glue on the sticks as well and I also covered the ends with that as well just to be on the safe side here's a close-up of the barrier and you can see where I've added mulch to the those areas I sprayed this barrier down really good and I also spread that soil that garden soil out a little more so I just thinned it out more spread it around and you can see the lighter spots back here that's the plaster and how thin it is over the plaster again it's not gonna matter and besides this is the back it looks pretty good for the most part. What I'm going to do when it dries is I'm going to tip it over. I'm going to shake all the excess off. And I'm really curious to see how much of that mulch actually stays on there. I think I'm going to lose all of it. So this is what I've got. I'm going to let this whole thing dry. And then I'm going to come back to it and talk about what is going to be next. Okay, to my surprise, this was all that came off. I was really surprised. Most of that mulch stayed put. And I'm telling you, I have tipped it to the side. I have shook it upside down. I have tapped really hard all around the bottom of the base, especially around where the barrier is. And this was all that came off. So I'm really surprised, but really happy. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time to test out the sticks. I wanna make sure these are nice and strong. I have no idea how well they are glued down or stuck down, and I wanna make sure if they need reinforcing that I do that now before continuing the build. So from the front part, they're pretty strong. They're pretty tight, and I'm pushing down on them. Um, I'm gonna go to the back side to see how well they're in place. I don't think this is completely 100% dry. I would say at least three days tops, uh, maybe longer. Okay, I'm just gonna push lightly from the back to see what happens. Okay, so that whole side piece just popped out and it's actually one whole piece. So I'm glad that that happened right now before I continued to build on top of it because that shows me, it shows you, and 
then you guys get to see what I'm learning as I'm going along. So what I did to fix that was, since it was one whole piece and the sticks were embedded in it, I just added a ton of tacky glue behind it, then smushed it down, packed it back into place. And this side as well, it's also one whole piece. It was loose, I did the same thing. And then I just added additional dirt and debris over the wet areas of the glue. But I packed it down pretty good and that should take care of that. Okay, before I move forward with continuing to build onto this, I'm gonna let it dry for a good few days before coming back to it. But it has so many layers that has to go on here with the grass and the lighter parts of the sand, which will be the lighter color of the dirt. Uh, I have several trees to make, um, different types of trees. Some of the trees aren't even gonna be full trees. They're just gonna be broken off. So there's not even gonna be a tree top to it. They'll just be the tree trunks standing up high. And since I have to make several different varieties of trees, I decided to do them per section. Now I've thought about this and the best way to move forward with this. And I decided that I'm gonna break it up into three sections. So we got the barrier as one, the mid section where the cemetery will be, and then the front section where the path and the entrance would be. And I thought that's gonna be the best way to work on this. Um, but I do wanna put down the first layer of grass. So, um, because I'm gonna be building on the grass as well. So if I can get the first layer on there, it's not gonna be fully covered completely. There's gonna be areas where there's dirt, um, but if I can scatter some grass down and begin that, um, I think I can move on to the individual sections. And I'm gonna do the trees per section because I don't wanna get burnt out and tired of making trees and I can see that happening. So I just thought this would be the best way, just add the trees per section and then as I go along. With that said, I'm not sure which area I'll be working on next um, after I do apply the first layer of the grass. So should I go with the barrier or should I go with the front section, which would be building the entrance way, which is gonna be super fun, and adding the path. Um, you guys let me know in the comments below which way I should go first. I can't do the middle section first. That's gotta be after the front part and the barrier are at least semi-completed because I think I'm gonna be adding more to each section as I go along. Um, so let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video today, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you wanna follow along with this series, definitely subscribe if you're not already and uh, hit that top bell notification button so that you don't miss any of these episodes if you wanna follow along. So let me know if you guys wanna see me start on the front section with the entrance way or should I continue on to the barrier and keep building onto that? Because I'm not really sure, I'm still undecided and you guys could totally help me out with that. And then I'll just go with the majority of the comments. So in the next episode, I'm going to lay down the first layer of the grass because I'm gonna be building on the grass as well with the different different types of grasses I have and the different layers of grass. Um, but if I can at least get the first basic layer down, I can probably move on to an individual section. Um, so right now, uh, that is where I'm at. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm so excited to move forward because this is like a super exciting, fun project um, and a big learning experience for me. So I'm very happy to share this with you all as well. And then we can learn together. Thank you everybody for subscribing and welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support. Um, so when I come back, I'll lay down that basic layer of grass and begin whichever section is chosen. But in the meantime, I do have another episode for the Josephine house coming up. And I am at a pause right now with the Dow series because I have misplaced my brand new water colored pencils. So until I find them, I cannot do anything with the dolls. 
but stay tuned for that because it will happen. I promise. I have this whole idea planned out that I really am excited to get to. So please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more of my miniature journey and projects. And also don't forget to let me know in the comments below which section you would like to see me begin on first. And until next time, tiny friends, you all have a lovely day and I will see you all on the mini side. Bye-bye.